Welcome back. Um, finally, finally, finally got to this video, which we promised some of our subscribers and uh, a couple folks on Ceramic Arts Network. And this is all going to be about how did we go about uh, designing a conversion to solid state relays for our kilns. Um, so it's been a while since I made a video, so it's actually kind of good to get back to doing this. And as promised, uh, here's the video. So first, the warning. All right, um, as you've seen in the past, you know, this video is about us designing this system uh, for us. It shows you the work that goes into, or some of the work that goes into designing these things. It's not meant to be a roadmap or a direction for you to do so. Uh, if you're not qualified, you can't do this. And you should get qualified people to do it for you, uh, and then get qualified people to safely install it and comply with all local codes, etc. Um, but having said all that, we did make this video so you can see some of the components that goes into designing uh, this kind of replacement. And so let's move on. Now that you had the warning page, and let's go on to relays. Okay. Um, relays are kind of the lifeblood of the kiln. They act as switches. Um, just like a light switch turns light on and off, a relay turns your elements on and off. And it just so happens your elements are such high current devices, they take a lot of amperage, uh, that a relay is a convenient way to allow the controller uh, to control the relay, turn the relay on, and then the relay uh, completes the circuit and turns the element on or off. So relays are just uh, fancy automatic switches that allow a uh, controller to turn a very small load on the relay itself, which then in turns uh, turns a bigger uh, load on the element, which is you know 10, 20, 30 amps. So it's a significant electrical load. Um, so that's basically what relays do. Now, um, kilns don't operate in an analog fashion. They uh, rely on a controller to turn the relays on and off at a certain speed to try and match your firing profile. So you put in a schedule, it says go heat this at 450 degrees an hour. The controller's job is to figure out, you know, how long does each relay have to be on and off in order to maintain that 450 degrees an hour. And so it figures that out and it turns the relays on and off and that's why you hear all the clicking noise. Um, so a little bit, let's go on to a little bit more about relays or solid state relays. Let's stick with the mechanical for a minute here. Most kilns have mechanical relays in them. They last anywhere from 150 to 500 firings. Um, so they have a finite life. Um, they have a maximum speed that you can make them turn on and off because they're mechanical devices. So for instance, the Bartlett controller, which we use and is real common among a lot of electric kilns, uh, they don't allow the duty cycle, the relay, to be less than 10 seconds. And I think their default is 14 seconds. So why is that significant? Um, it's significant because if you can't turn something on as fast as you want to, then eventually it will limit the total power of the kiln. Uh, and what we found is it can have an effect on the um, uh, the evenness of a zone kiln. Uh, so what do you do? Well, solid state relays are kind of cool. You know, they last longer, they turn on and off quicker. So how about we use that? Solid state relays have been around in industry for, you know, years and years and years. So now more and more people are uh, converting to, from mechanical to solid state because of the longevity. Um, but they do have, I don't want to say a bad aspect to them, but they have a negative aspect in that um, a solid state relay can stick in the on position probably as much or as often as it could stick in the off position when it goes bad. Now mechanical relays occasionally rarely stick in the on position, uh, but when you do that in an electric kiln, then the elements stay live. So that's an issue. It's not a good issue. Um, on the other side of that, if we can solve that problem, they are zero crossing devices. So what does that mean? Well, if we look down here at this really exotic hand drawing that I made, um, 
you know, AC power really has peak voltages. So, for instance, in the United States, you have a 120 volt receptacle. It really operates from uh, minus 177 volts to positive 177 volts, and it changes its polarity 60 times a second. So that's why we call it 60 cycles. Um, and then, as a result of that, it crosses zero volts uh, several times during the cycle, right? There it goes through zero. So the good thing about uh, solid state relays is they uh, they only fire when the voltage crosses zero. So this is a gentler way to turn something on rather than turn it on at 137 volts peak. Um, so zero crossing is a good thing. And last, solid state relays have duty cycles of 200 milliseconds, which is a fancy way of saying two seconds. So since their duty cycle is much less than that of a uh, mechanical relay, now we can control things uh, much more smoothly and much more finely. So that's some of the good and some of the bad. So solid state relay, what can we expect? What are the benefits? Um, we would expect them to last for a long time. We would expect them to provide longer element life. Uh, we'd expect them to give us more firings per element um, and more even firings. And by default, because they have this one little property of failing closed as often as open, uh, it uh, makes it necessary to put in a contactor that disconnects and takes uh, removes all the power from the kiln so no one can stick their hands in there when there's power ever. Um, and then, of course, we have no more clicking noise, which some may not enjoy. And then it should allow us to use lighter weight shelves. Um, the primary candidates are the economical bonded nitride. Unfortunately, they conduct electricity. But fortunately, when you go this route, no longer can electricity uh, be present whenever you have the kiln open. So it solves that problem, and now we know that um, using those shelves saves us about 15% in mass, total mass. So that means we took a, an old shelf, and we loaded it, and we weighed it, and we took a new bonded nitride, we loaded it, and we weighed it, and we said, oh, we saved at least 15% in total mass. So I don't know about you, but I'm tired of firing my shelves. They don't look any better. Every time I glaze fire them, they look like shelves. So it's a total waste of energy. Um, so that'll allow us to use those, and then those have the benefit of not needing kiln wash, which is a savings. And most importantly, those have the benefit of just scraping off any glaze that happens to get on them super easily, so now we don't have to grind. Uh, and in a studio environment, that's super important because it takes labor and effort and time and all that other good stuff. Um, so that's some of the benefits. Before we can do the design, we need to, to come up with a philosophy or a sequence of operation. So we're going to say we're going to make this super safe. And the only time the kiln elements can be energized is when the controller is firing, not an idle. The controller is not detected an error. Uh, and the lid is closed. So if the lid is up, no firing. So to do this, we create a safety loop. Uh, where the power originates from the controller, and then we put some uh, safety switches in between that. So it's one loop that's controlled by all these safeties. So if the lid is lifted while you're firing, the power will be disabled to the elements. Um, and uh, in our case, the philosophy is let's leave power to the controller, uh, but no power to the elements. So if you lift the lid and put a cone in, no problem. If you lift the lid for five minutes, the controller will create an error thinking that it can't heat up um, and it will uh, fail on error and you'll have to restart the whole thing. Um, if, if none of that happens, then the controller will just run the program from start to finish and it'll, it'll uh, energize the solid state relays just as if they were mechanical, but it'll be able to do them uh, on a faster duty cycle. So you should end up with a faster uh, firing, uh, which means more throughput for your kiln. Um, and you should end up with more even results and longer element life. So lots of good pluses uh, as a possibility there. So now the design. Okay, so let's figure out our design considerations. 
uh, we want to do a nice design. So for long life solid state relays, we want to cool the solid state relays as effectively as we can, which means we're going to follow the manufacturer's charts. Uh, you know, back in the day, I used to have to uh, figure out junction temperatures and thermal conductivity. And nowadays, this is so common, you look up on their chart and you can determine what size heat sink you need. Uh, next thing we want to do is we're going to supply a uh, transformer for this and uh, we want to cover uh, what we call the inrush current. Uh, so we want a big enough transformer basically kind of oversized enough so it'll last forever. So that's what that means. Uh, the primary power safe loop relay shall be series wired for redundancy. So somehow we want to put redundant action in our primary power loop. Uh, the lid safety switch, we're going to go for redundancy as well, uh, just to make it super safe. So now instead of one uh, switch on the lid, we have two. Uh, so it's the odds on it ever failing are uh, extremely slim. Uh, and then the safety contactor that we install, which is the big switch that turns the main power off to the um, elements, needs to be sized, actually oversized uh, a bit. So in our case, I think our kiln's 48 amps, the uh, contact rating is 50 amp nominal and 65 amp resistive, which is what our kiln is. So it's rated uh, considerably beyond whatever it's going to encounter. Uh, so it should last us a long, long, long time. And then everything must fit neatly in the existing steel control box so it's safe and uh, code. And all the wiring that we use uh, to wire, wire between devices inside uh, need to be the correct size for the amperage and the temperature. Uh, and that's pretty easy to do. And then the final piece is to confirm this thermal design uh, and get a floor. We've got one, something to measure uh, all the uh, um, temperatures that we have to make sure that our design is running cool and will be long life. Um, and so we have the ability to do that and we will if we ever build one of these things and put it together. All right, so on to designing this. So I'm an old school guy. I'm going to write it down. I'm just going to hand draw it. And as I hand draw it, I'm going to pull out uh, cut sheets for the parts that I pick. So there's the solid state relay. There's the definite purpose contactor. There's uh, more about the solid state relay. And there's the thermal properties of the solid state relay. So as you're drawing this up, you start putting in your components and making sure they're all oversized and then uh, recording the essential pieces that you need. Um, and the last thing, yeah, it's probably really essential here is we don't have to do junction temperatures anymore or any of that stuff. We manufacturers just give us a graph and we can pick a uh, suitable uh, heat sink for their device based on using their graph. So it's a lot easier, but be honest with you, the old way wasn't hard either. Just took a little bit of uh, math, mainly adding temperatures together. So there's the design and here's our controller. And our controller already has this built-in safety output, which is kind of nice. And that safety output uh, it doesn't become powered until you run a program uh, and it becomes unpowered if there's an error. So right out of the safety output, we use the power. We go to driver relay, safety relay, which is here. Um, but we also put redundant lid safety switches in series. So if the lid is up, the control is not operating a program. Uh, meaning it's idle or there's an error, no power to the elements. And how do we control that? We have this contactor here that supplies power to all our relays. So as long as this contactor is not energized, no power. So super simple, super safe, duplicate redundancy. Um, in the lid switch as well as this fire enable relay we series wire a double pull uh, single throw in series so now we have uh, so so our probability of ever 
having anything stick closed is, you know, astronomically low. So super safe design, and then uh, we like how it looks, and it makes sense. So next thing to do is put it all together and pick parts. And we pick parts based on, you know, if you look here, you saw me earlier grabbing the cut sheets on these things. And for instance, this contactor is an inrush current of uh, 83 VA and a sealed uh, uh, operational current or watts, if you want to call it that, is 9.3. So when we pull the contactor in, it costs us 83 VA. When it's sealed in, it only costs us 9.3. So we have to look at the inrush and make sure our transformer is oversized enough to handle the inrush. And so we go through components like that. Other components we go through, the contacts here are rated at 50 amps and resistive 65 amps. Our kiln is 48 and resistive is what it is because it's all um, elements. So this, the contacts are well overrated for the load they're gonna carry. Um, so we go through those type of things to figure out what our parts are going to be and then we make a list of our parts. And so our, for our super safe, super conservative system, uh, $323 for two kilns. Uh, so if you notice the quantities here, you know there's six there, there's two of those, there's two of those, etc. cetera. Um, so this is going to be a uh, realistic price. We source this and, and found some economical suppliers. Um, so what are we missing? We're missing a couple of uh, mercury switches and some wiring. Uh, so this is going to be maybe $200 per kiln to do a three zone kiln, uh, fully solid state. Uh, so it looks like it's gonna be a good project, uh, economical and worthwhile to do, and then we'll never have to revisit and replace these relays anymore. So, why would we do all that? Well, one, it's super economical. And what do we expect? Um, and we would expect to save money on, uh, sh shorten our firing times for our fast glaze schedule and save money on the extra two hours that they all sit there and percolate because they can't make it fast enough, uh, which also in improves our throughput. So on a studio environment, throughput's kind of important. Um, the relays, the solid state ones will should last forever. So long life, but I don't expect to replace those. Um, they should make the elements last longer and we should be able to use them uh, for a longer time. And we're gonna have more even firings as a result of the uh, uh, decrease in uh, duty cycle. Um, and then the biggie, especially in the studios, the ability to change our Shelves out to bonded nitride, they don't say it was 15% of the mass to fire, and I'm just tired of firing shelves. They don't come out any better looking each time I fire them. And we'll save at least 15% on electricity and mass. And then real important for us as well is no more grinding, and really important is no more kiln wash. Because the bonded nitride, uh, pretty easy to just scrape off, no big deal. Um, so that is what we expect. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, I think pretty successful and ran through the design and if we if we uh, put one together in the near future we'll probably make a video on it and show you how well it fits together but for now this is the video I promised people I would do uh, and they said well what does it take to design something like this and so now you know some of the work that goes into it or most of it uh, not entirely all of it but now you have a good idea of some of the design work that needs to go into it before you uh, contemplate doing this. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful and hope it prompts some more questions from some of the folks out there.